Art. I teach 7-8 Science at Rutland Town School. Um, focus on student-centered uh, curricular development, playlist development, uh, alternative, you know, optional demonstration of understanding, and this year uh, piloting a digital badging program uh, for transferable skills that happen inside and outside the classroom. So students can gain badges for activities that sort of, you know, mirror their own lives more so than just their lives in the classroom. What's the, um, what's the connection between kind of the curricular framework and badging? Like what's the overlap there or what's the content or learning you're focused on with the badges? Right. So in looking at, you know, transferable skills uh, are so ubiquitous across the curriculum. Um, you know, in designing curriculum, you look at what really are the, the end results? What do you want kids to leave with? And part of it is the curricular piece. You want them to have conceptual knowledge and you want them to have some understanding of science concepts, but a lot of it still falls under the transferable skills. Are they inventing? Are they collaborating? Are they being critical thinkers? Are they connecting to larger world uh, you know, issues? And are they making connections outside the classroom? So often I find that kids uh, look at school as so compartmentalized. They, you know, ELA is ELA and when they leave that room, that class is over and they come to science or they go and leave and go to social studies. So we're walling this thing off. So the hope was with uh, looking at transferable skills, students start to kind of catch themselves developing those skills across the curriculum and then outside of school. Um, and initially sitting down and starting this whole project, we had, I would ask kids, you know, where are you, uh, you know, where do you think, you know, critically or where are you inventive? It's like, oh, I paint or I dance or I play basketball. And I said, okay, where are you leader in school? Well, I work on projects and I'm part of, you know, groups and I do things like that in the classroom. I said, are those connected? And they're like, oh no, that's not it at all. Where these are really separate things. My life outside of school is different than my life inside of school. And they didn't see the connection of the skills base that what makes them successful on the playing field also makes them successful in the classroom. And then I had kids like, I don't really like school. I struggle. Well, are you a leader? Well, I try really hard and I work on, you know, this, this, and this, and I'm really proud of, they could all identify something they were really excited about that they did in school. And it's like, boy, what skill got you to that point? Well, I persevered and I was able to work with other people and some of them didn't want to do anything. So I was able to do this and I, they got excited about, you know, really this project, but really what they're excited about was their ability to show those transferable skills. So the whole impetus behind the project was to find ways in which we can connect the skills that will make them successful in high school with the skills that they are you know, developing throughout their day, regardless of where it is. Can you say a little bit more about why the, the badges as indicators of that are important? Because it sounds like you have these rich conversations and you get them to surface that. Do you think mm -hmm. it's the part of the, the system that you've created allows for those conversations? I, I think it's part of it. Because you know, the way the class runs is so student driven, we're constantly having those conversations about that person. So if I sit down and you know, I have one-to-one -one time with every student every day, so when we have that FaceTime, it's where are you? What are you working on? Can, they, can you show me your progress? Can you explain your understanding? Can you demonstrate your understanding? What would you need from me? Where's your next step? Uh, so it's a lot of individualized planning. So this really becomes that next step because at the end of it all, that what they've been working on is really the development of those skills and how they can turn that into a demonstration of conceptual knowledge. So I really find it important for kids to sort of step back and look at, okay, the skill I use in science is the same thing I'm going to use in social studies, is the same thing I'm going to use here. And that, you know, I think kind of blends itself into the entire framework of everything. And I wanted the transferable skills to be another part of what they're learning. So that's why now a lot of, it, it, at least the end of every science unit, one of their per, uh, performance tasks uh, to meet the proficiency is to step back and look at the skills, the identified skills that they worked on within the framework of that unit. And they pick one and they think, I really did well at this thing. And then they have to defend it. So the idea being, they take this and then they, they kind of level up. Um, it's really not the, the whole gamification of curriculum. In this case, it's much more taking and having a physical um, representation of I have this skill. So part of it was, you know, you look at 
at Harvard, they have their IT program has these little soft skills badges. Like I can do this and I can do this and I can code and I can, and Microsoft has their own you know, badging system. So there are ways in which resumes are being built using badges. Well, we kids don't have resumes, but we do have PLPs, you know, those personalized learning plans, especially because they're student led conferences now, is a student that has 20, 20 minutes or half an hour to sit down with a parent and go, um, this is what I'm doing. And often they'll show a piece of work, like here's an essay I wrote that I was really proud of, and here's my jump rope grades, and here are the proficiencies I've met, and here are my goals. And then we have 18 minutes left where we all sit around and stare at each other, and it's, you know, it's a little awkward. So this way, what we're giving kids is the opportunity to have physical badges that link out to something. So saying, here's the skill I worked on, here's the demonstration of that skill, and here's the conceptual knowledge that went along with me demonstrating that I can do this thing, whatever it might be. So we ended up having a much richer conversation with parents as well, because they, now the kids have really physical um, kind of representations of you know, what it is that they're doing. So the parents have a much more transparent view of what the goal is, especially around student-centered learning. We want them to look at, you know, kind of educating the whole child here and trying to think of them as people as well as just conceptual learners. So that's really where we got to. All right, the end of that was, well, was really interesting. It kind of gets to this question I had, um, and I think you kind of answered it there, but if you can reframe it in this question of, and it was one that I've been riddled with for years, and I think, and, and other people, you know, I know that they've asked the same, but how is kind of thinking about micro-credentialing and badging, um, we'll just use the word better, better than, uh, you know, more complex than, more meaningful than, you know, giving like alphabet or numbers to a score or learning with like a percentage or a indicator on a scale, like how is using micro-credentialing badging not just different than that, but better to use a kind of a generic term? Well, I think it strikes to the heart of being, of understanding yourself as a learner. Um, and also for me, understanding the role of being an educator, it, it kind of flips the script. So, I mean, we both started in the A to F, zero to 100, I mean, 101 deviations on which we sort of assign, is it 86, is it 87, is it 90, um, is it A, B, C, D, you know, or F? And uh, I'm sure you had the same situation that a student would come to you and hand you an essay or hand you a lab and say, okay, what's my grade now? So they weren't concerned with learning. It was, it was about the almighty number. It was what deviation do I get because that number or that letter makes me happy and we can all move on. So is that truly a demonstration of what they know and can do? Or is this just sort of the goal is just to get the number, to hit the number, to hit that letter uh, in transferable skills there is no number attached. There is nothing. It's I can show I can do this or I can't show I can do this. And when they've earned that badge and they feel they can defend it, they have a much greater understanding of themselves as learners. They can look and say, I have this skill. So for example, I have a, a young woman who wants to go to the Stafford Technical Center at Rutland High School next year, and she wants to be in the cosmetology program. Uh, you know, wants to get into the whole, you know, beauty salon type of deal. But the problem is there are more kids applying for those spots than there are spots. And she said, I'm really excited that the badges I have, I can sit down and they interview and you have to kind of defend that you're going to be good for this program. You don't just automatically get in. She said, I can show them I have these skills and I can show them where I have these skills. So all of a sudden she has this understanding of herself as a learner and how she learns best and ways in which she's strong and ways in which she knows she still needs to develop. A little bit more you know collaborative skills are great critical thinking okay not so much so she's working towards those badges and as she earns the badges she gains confidence that yeah i can do this so no matter what they throw at me i have the skills necessary to learn that concept and not i can go to the cosmetology program and i can get a b or i can get an i got an 84 which is better than the 80 i had last week that number becomes you know kind of meaningless when you know, what does an 80 say about you as a learner? Well, it says I kind of get it. Okay, what's a 78 then? I kind of get it less. That, you know, it, when you start to have those conversations, you're missing, you know, the, the deeper conversation, the deeper dive that a student can take into themselves as a learner. 
I'm going to lean in here too because uh, I've seen badges in classrooms where you know you're working in Schoology or some other learning management system, and you can um, incentivize and motivate through um, assigning a badge. But I can do that without ever having a conversation with a kid, or I can do that without uh, ever making my own thinking clear. And it sounds like I'm hearing a partnership as you define together, whether it's understanding what it is or claims and evidence. So can you speak to that? If that's like it's that partnership thing, maybe. Sure. Well, in the uh, the initial playlist itself, uh, they not only the we start with the NGSS standard. You know, here's what you need to do. We break it down. I have the students break it down. Then we have it broken down to I can statements. I can show this. I can identify. I can represent. I can model. And then the transferable skills. Here are the things that you know. Here are the skills that are really going to come into play here. So they're very clear. It's very transparent. These are the skills that I'm going to need to be able to show to meet this proficiency. So in having that understanding right away, I can do a lot of, uh, I always call it anecdotal, but really fun formative where I can walk by and maybe there's a group of students discussing some data. I can say, okay, stop. How well are we collaborating right now? If you had to, you know, if you had to assess yourself, oh, we're a two, why? Well, I'm not really sharing that much or I'm just kind of listening and I haven't really done that much. Students are, there, are probably the toughest evaluators of themselves um, just by age group of anybody. I look and say, okay, so what can we change? Well, I can do this. So we're constantly having that language being used in terms of how's the skill that you're supposed to be showing? How's that going? Instead of going, oh, can I see your data? And what does your data show? We can do that, but I always start with the transferable skill. So that conversation is key. If not, it just becomes another thing they get because they filled out a piece of paper. So you have to, it has to become part of the culture of what you're doing to have kids. And sometimes they can look and say, okay, what are you doing well? Um, we're collaborating. What are you not doing well? Uh, we're probably not really thinking about the data. We're talking about how we'll present it, but not what the data means. So they start to identify that. It's different when it teacher to student and student to teacher, but when they're working and we're having, trying to create this culture of that, it's student talks to student, talks to student, talks to student. And then if they need it, they can talk to me, or I, I find I'm injecting myself sometimes in places where I probably don't need to be because they've got it handled. And that is, I mean, that's a new sort of thing. And, any, and people that come into the class and sort of watch it all play out, sort of look and go, wow, they're all kind of doing their own thing. And it, it looks like I'm not doing very much, but realistically, I'm kind of, you know, bouncing around and, and you know, talking about transferable skills. We're talking about what they're working on. So they, in the big scheme of things, they don't even realize that that's what they're doing. We're just talking about, you know, the day, what they're up to. Hey, Noah, thanks so much for sharing. Uh, we're near the end of the conversation, but I'm wondering if you have some um, documents or evidence uh, in regards to this work that we'll share out next to this video. If you do, can you just kind of frame what those are? Sure. Um, well, I mean, we have all the badge descriptions and those are all laid out for kids. Uh, my advisory has put together, uh, we spent the early part of the year once a week stopping and looking at one transferable skill and kind of having this popcorn session where kids are throwing out, uh, well, where do you show, where are you collaborative or where are you inventive? Well, I'm inventive here you know, in an art class and at home and I do this and I paint and, I, and the kids created these really cool word clouds that are hung up in the room so they can always reference those if they're feeling a little stuck. And I guess the other piece probably would be the application that students fill out at the end of each unit. So actually getting the badge, how do they, what does that reflection look like and what kind of feedback do they get from that from me? I feel like those are probably the most important things. And then, you know, and people can contact me, you know, my stuff is all open source, so it doesn't really matter. Anybody that wants to see stuff can absolutely, you know, contact me and I can fill in holes where maybe I didn't cover it in the conversation or stuff that doesn't make sense you know, on paper. And you're also very generous of opening up your classroom for anybody to come in and, and have a visit too, right? Oh, it, that makes me better. I like when people come in and go, why'd you do that? Or why did you do this thing in that way? Because in the, the craziness that is every day, sometimes I don't take the time for that reflection and having that differing perspective, I think helps shape what's, uh, what's happening here because end of the day, it's about making it better for the kids. So I want them to have the best experience possible. And that comes with, you know, me not being an island. 
Thanks so much, Noah, for having this conversation. It's short, but uh, it's part of the series to have some short conversations about uh, micro-credentialing and badging going on in Vermont. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for having me.